All right, guys, highlight for first day of the week, Monday, May 12th or May 11th. Real quick, couple things. You can't ignore context. You can't ignore the coil. So you get a V-Web, which is this line coming down in here. People, oh, I'm going to sell it. You're ignoring the coil that you have in here. What I was telling people is you could still sell anything you want to sell to get short. You just got to understand that this pop through here shouldn't be a surprise. Because when you have a coil, it's like cranking on a pulley. And the thing isn't going it. Whatever you're trying to pull up or down isn't working. And you're cranking on this handle and it's getting tighter and tighter. Let that handle go and watch what happens, right? Dangerous. So you got to understand the coil so when they let it go, it could, it could um, extend. That's just the probability. I never talk people out of getting short in any or long in any particular area. I just try to give them a sense of how patient you should be and not be short here, short here, short here, and be surprised that it ran because then you would miss this context, you know? Um, so that's one of the things that we uh, we're looking at as this day session um, came up. Also a, a highlight was this move from there to there came off the screen a little bit was de Blasio saying that it could be as early as June or could be as far back as June before New York city reopens. The market didn't like it. What do we say at the bottom there was probably stupid news, which means, as my friends from a prop firm I came from talk about, it's just something that will get rebounded or get retraced and pull back because de Blasio doesn't make the calls necessarily in New York City. And I don't think it's that big of a surprise that they're going to stay closed longer. All right. So sure enough, you have people from being short or staying short on that particular news that came out about an hour ago. Last thing I want to add to this highlight is kind of circle back to Friday's unemployment numbers and how the media tries to create the comparison with the Great Depression. You know, those numbers are around 25%. These numbers are 14, 15%. But when you add them up and when we get to the worst, they might be at 25%. And those are Great Depression numbers they try to sensationalize. There's the difference of how we get to those unemployment numbers. In the late 20s and 30s, you got to 25% unemployment because there was no jobs, there was no economic productivity, there was no work. So they slowly deteriorated and more and more people were unemployed. Here was a switch you turned off and eliminated jobs. The underpinnings fundamentally of the economy were fine, but something changed and it was, hey, we got to shut down because of this virus. So whether you agree or disagree with the reaction to this virus, that's why we went from 3.5% unemployment to 15 to 20 to 25 with that being said, when you unwind that lockdown, sure, there's some carnage that you're going to have anytime you shut down commerce for one month, two months, especially some industries completely, restaurants, travel, hotels. Of course, you're going to have um, a rough patch to get back. However, it's not like the Great Depression where there just wasn't fundamentally the work there. There wasn't the capacity for people to have money to hire and round and round they go until World War II and all the demand for manufacturing that came in an instant. All right. And that's what pulled us out. Now with this, the demand was there. Productivity was there. Economy was there. The bridges, and this is an important part of understanding this. So you could strip out the sensationalism that the journalists give you. Listen, journalists are good at writing. And they're good at talking and reading a teleprompter as if they're not reading. They're good at asking questions and interacting with a person that they're interviewing. And some are good at understanding what they're talking about, but those are their first skills. They're not necessarily well-versed in central bank. These rates, uh, comparing them to the Great Depression. And I know part of it is supposed to be their job to get that out of the experts they interview. But for people trading and listening to my YouTube videos in the trading room, it's important that you know more than those people. You don't have to be a central banker. I don't even know all the inner workings of what the central bank has done in historic fashion to create the bridge. And I've been explaining this from economic terms with the bridge. The rapids is this virus. Early March, March 11th, we had to leave the economy and instead of having everybody walk through roaring rapids of a river, which would have swept businesses and employers and employees right down, 
and write out. We created stimulus bridges, money in people's pockets, the bridge of beefing up unemployment benefits so people had a little bit more when they filed their claims, the PPP program to give small businesses a chance not to fire as many people. The central bank is the biggest one, yet the one the novice person ain't going to understand. Oh, they just think lower interest rates. That's just part of it. The liquidity that not only our Federal Reserve has um, supplied, but coordinated through central banks around the world has given, the best way to explain it is in any economy, there's dominoes. You don't pay your rent as a restaurateur, that mortgage holder can't pay what he owes to his lenders and his lenders might have investors that is some pension fund in Oregon and then those workers, and then that domino just starts to fall. And there's other examples on how wicked it could get. I think the best way to explain what central banks have done is provide backstops to some of those dominoes so that they don't fall. So there's access to capital, pretty inexpensive, essentially interest-free access to capital to keep that domino from falling, which keeps another domino from falling and another domino from falling. The novice American, including even myself, even though I've done this for 25 years, don't even understand the, the, the complete inner workings of supplying liquidity to bondholders, to lenders, to opening the window for borrowing money and making that money available to others. The default is they're printing money. There's a notion there's, there's some of that. Yeah, but the, what they're doing is investing in the future also with printed money and there could be inflation and that's always a worry, but they could adjust and fight off that. Important thing is they built this bridge that without it, you'd have a tumbling stock market. You'd have a tougher chance of on the other side of reopening, which is where we're starting to land right now would be a tough, hard landing without these bridges because you'd have people have to walk across, get swept away. They couldn't even get to the other side. And I think that the messaging should be done better to help people understand everything I'm talking about, where this is a hard landing and this is a soft landing. What do I mean by a soft landing? Well, you're, everybody's landing into not normal economic conditions. Restaurants are half capacity, 25%. Well, that's not, that's not going to make a restaurant flourish. Some can't even reopen with that. The sports arenas, aren't even back. There's just so much on the hard landing. People aren't going to be traveling and getting on planes. Therefore, hotels and everything else will suffer. So we're reopening in hot coals. And now we got to walk to the cool grass that you could remember from January, February, early March, as far as economic conditions are concerned. And so the grass is what would be considered normal or as close to where we were in January, February, in the first week of March, where people are a little less afraid to fly on an airplane, give someone a hug, simple things like that. And how do you get there? And when do you get there? Well, that's what the markets are all trying to figure out. How much is too much stimulus wise? That's what the market's trying to figure out. But they've come in to let the market continue to function and then get us as quickly to the cool grass as possible, which is normal. This is the temporary normal. Temporary normal is where we're now. Not new normal, because new normal implies it's going to be like that forever. Temporary normal is, well, it's only going to be like this for a temporary amount of time. And at some point, yeah, we, we will have industries created because of this. We will have safeguards in place because of this. Um, there's already ideas of that guys or people have to um, disinfect people before they walk into a restaurant with some innovative, innovative door that um, disinfects someone like they take an x-ray at the airport. So again, all things to eliminate fear and create that innovative um, capitalistic spirit. And so while things will I think things will get back to normal, obviously. We'll just have different safeguards in place that, God forbid, this ever happens again. And the lethal rate is 40% or 50% instead of 1% or 2%. We're prepared for it. And we don't have to 
go to extremes. Now, Governor Cuomo is giving his press conference. And you want to see if he backs up. De Blasio mentions New York City. But he's just giving his um, daily press conference. So that's what I wanted to do. Kind of a longer highlight video today. Just summarizing how to digest the real first unemployment numbers that came out on Friday, last Friday, of the first you know full month of a shutdown. And now we're starting to build some structure with these jobless claims number every Thursday, but also some structure with our first unemployment number. And then you build up the other wall and then you try to determine where and when things look better. And you can look at the unemployment rate similar to the outbreak. You try to flatten the curve of unemployment and then bring it back down. We knew we were going to bring the outbreak and the cases back down and you're going to bring the unemployment rate back down. Are you going to bring it down as fast as it went up? No, but you're going to bring it, you're going to go from sideways to lower and you are going to bring it back down, not to exactly where it was, but how close and when this structure starts to get formed, that's how you analyze the data and these numbers properly. As a trader, not like an economist or certainly not like an anchor or journalist and not even like the so-called experts on business channels, but as a trader, you have to have some structure to compare it to something to find value if this unemployment rate at 10% is actually great. Others would say unemployment's still 10%. Yeah, but it was 25%. Ooh, that was great depression stuff. No, 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 no. T different, different times, different ball game, all right? Different ball game. Yes, if it was the 1930s and we all wore hats and suits to baseball games, then it's apples to apples. It's not. Different economy, different reason why we got there in 1930 versus 2020. And different reasons why we'll go back down. Keep that in mind. Understand these numbers and these stories like traders, not like sensationalized journalists and headlines. Read the story. And even the story is wrong. You want the truth, you got to go to good trusted sources whether it's hard to find on twitter it's hard to find on youtube it's hard to find on the internet but follow good structure and compare something to something else to find value always remember if it wasn't for ugly people we wouldn't have good looking people